Alrighty then, so really quick, I uh, just needed to do the, the rendering of the wireframes and all that good stuff. Um, so first of all, this is what I mean by just like add a background plane and stuff. Um, make sure your object is sitting on the background plane, I'm ignoring the sphere clipping. Um, but however angle you're rendering this, you shouldn't see off of that ground plane. And this is literally just a plane that I've extruded two or three edges on. Um, so anywho, so assuming that I wanted to do a wireframe overlay, there's a few different ways to do that. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just set up a basic render of this, and I'll show you Arnold and Redshift. Um, usually when I default to lights, uh, I actually grab physical sky instead of a sky dome light. Um, I find it's just a little bit easier, or like it looks a little bit nicer. Um, you need to do less work, you don't need to import an HDRI, it just does some decent stuff for lighting. Uh, you can go through and play a little bit with like the, the azimuth or whatever the heck. However you pronounce this, I honestly don't know. Um, kind of sort of brighten things up a little bit or something. Do whatever you want to do to make this look decent. Um, but I'm just going to say, cool, this is our render. And I am just going to let this render really fast. If you're in, if you're in Arnold, this is almost done, so I'm not going to mess with it. Um, if you go into render in the Arnold render view, you can turn off the progressive refinement, and it just makes it a little bit more obvious when your render's done. Uh, I see a lot of times people accidentally save files with like still some like weird, weird little sampley fuzzies on the side. Um, alternately, just wait until it says rendering done, uh, and then just go ahead and file save this. Um, I will save this just on my desktop. Wireframe base. Cool. So now we have a base image. To actually put wireframes on this, it's actually a fairly straightforward process. Um, so this is an Arnold. I'm just going to hide the background, grab both of my objects here, and assign it an Arnold shader. There's literally a shader called AI wireframe. Just pop that on, and you should be pretty much good to go uh, once you render this. Uh, it'll render the wireframe. Um, so one thing you want to make sure, two things actually that you want to make sure of for the wireframe. Uh, one is I usually just turn off all the lights and stuff. You don't want to see the lights in the background. Uh, this is one of the shaders in Arnold that will actually render without any kind of, it's like not affected by lights at all. It just renders. Um, and what's going to make my life a little bit easier in the future is sort of two things. I can approach this two ways. Um, if you look at the alpha for this, it's only rendered where the faces are. That's totally fine. It's going to be white and black here, and then alpha or nothingness back here. Um, if for some reason that's not working, the only thing you don't want is to have like a, an actual black background with no alpha in the background. So if that's ever something you think might be a possibility, uh, what you want to do is just turn this plane back on. Uh, you'll notice the wireframe is actually being sort of transferred via uh, what the heck? Global illumination to the ground, which is a little weird, so it will make stuff look like it's glowing. Um, but you can assign this a new material and just make it a... Uh, oops. I usually just use a uh, Maya standard surface shader, honestly, um, and just set that to be white. So this way what you should have uh, is if for some reason, again, you don't have that alpha, you have a nice white background that you can play with. Um, so I'm just going to set that back to, to RGB. Then I'll grab this and I will do a file save image uh, on my desktop, wireframe Arnold. Um, oh, and the other thing actually that you will notice uh, that is like kind of important um, is the one, this renders super fast. Uh, two, if I look at the sphere, this is not tessellated and this is rendering tessellated. <laughs> Um, this one is actually tessellated, so we'll ignore that. So looking only at the sphere, there's a way to fix that. It's really straightforward. If you just go into the shader itself, um, under edge type, set it from triangles to polygons, and then it will actually render that properly and not tessellated. Um, so if you're in my class for the pen assignment, make sure that you turn off tessellation on your, on your wireframes. Um, and then go ahead and just save this again. And oh my goodness. <laughs> Ha! Ah, yes. Great. Um, Alright, so we have that. If you ever need to, uh, you can also, within the shader, it's a fairly simple shader, but you can change the, the line width. Um, if you want to, you can make the wireframe different colors. You could 
do something weird and like map a ramp into that or something, uh, I think, if you wanted to. I never really tried it, there's no real use to do that. Um, then you can change the background color like you would anything else if you wanted to do something like really trippy. Uh, for this, I just recommend black lines and a white background. Because what you're going to want to do once you have that is go into Photoshop and I'm just going to drag this in so we have a background. And usually you do need to do this in like a third party software. Um, if you use Photoshop versus something else, I don't really care. But all you need to do with this white background and black lines is set the uh, layer to be multiply instead of normal and that way it'll basically just pop the wireframe right on your existing image. Uh, for this to actually work properly again uh, you do need the sort of white and black makes it really obvious what's happening and you can also go through and do make sure that you're rendering from the same camera angle uh, if you don't and your wireframe is like weirdly off ah, what have I done? Ah interesting. Um, if you aren't paying attention and you, you know, render from like a different camera angle, your wireframe is going to be offset and it's going to be very, very strange looking. Um, so, you know, something like that is not ideal. Uh, so just make sure that you preserve the same camera angle, however you find a reasonable way to do that. Um, interesting tidbit you can do is Alt Z instead of Control Z is going to undo your last camera angle and Alt Y will redo that camera angle. Um, kind of just like weird, weird, helpful, handy tidbits. Um, so that's Arnold and actually applying these. Um, if for some reason, sometimes I cheat and if I need the line to be thicker, I will just add like a color glow to this on the outside and kind of like make it a little bit harder. Um, it's better to just render things correctly. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much Arnold. Uh, doing this in Redshift is also very, very similar. So I'm going to get rid of this AI Sky Dome light. Um, and what I'm going to do is just assign a new material and I have... This is trial version of Redshift. I need to get the actual license, but later problems. Um, so what I'm going to do is go Redshift Material and grab... Where is it? Uh, Redshift. I, I like Redshift Incandescent. It doesn't respond to lighting. You get no shading on any of your models. And it's just overall fairly convenient to work on. Um, so this is what Incandescent will give you by default. If you make this blue, it's basically just going to turn your entire model blue with no regard to lighting at all. This is actually what you want for the wireframe. Uh, so instead of just using a default color, we're just going to go in here to and map in a... Uh, where is it? Okay. Set this back to default. We click on Redshift and you can search for wire... Wi wire? <laughs> up here and just map in this Redshift wireframe. And what it's going to do is pop in pretty much the same wireframe as it did previously. Uh, and again, if you want to, you can control the color of the... Oof. Uh, you can control the color of those lines um, and make them, you know, whatever style you want. In this case, it's still tessellating that sphere. Uh, just untick show hidden edges, and it will, if you have quads, it'll add quads back into that. Um, and same process as before. Pretty much just go through, um, save this out, and just for grins, I'll show you the... Oof. EXRs. Um, so if I save this as a JPEG, it won't have the transparency, which will be weird. Um, this is this is pretty much it. I'm just going to show you how it works if you have an alpha on it, just because I like being thorough. Um, but that, that was pretty much the tutorial of how to do wireframes. Um, so you'll notice this one has an alpha. Um, it's not affecting the background. Honestly, this is pretty cool looking. Um, I do want the wireframe... I want to see your original object through the wireframe. Uh, so what you can do is, again, just set this to multiply, and it works pretty much the exact same way. Um, this one, actually, you'll notice that you see the bottom of the sphere, and that is because I turned off the ground plane entirely, which I realize, in retrospect, was dumb, because I had the sphere clipping through the ground. So do try to avoid stuff like this where possible. Just kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Um, in this case, I can also just go through and, if I wanted to, just draw out that wireframe and just kind of be a little lazy about it. Um, but that's basically uh, doing wireframes. Um, the only instance where maybe I would want to say change the color of this wireframe. So let me do something, say my object is black or something like that, or super dark, and you wouldn't be able to reasonably see a black outline on it. What you can do in that case is set your wire color to be zero and this darker color, actually, 
actually, yeah, what the heck, um, and set this darker color to be black. Um, or green, or whatever. Um, if you do green, you can pull it like a green screen. Um, it honestly doesn't super matter. I'm actually going to leave it green, because what the heck. Um, so I'll do wireframe. Wire. Wireframe. Green. Um, so what you could do if you needed to, in that instance, actually, yeah, so what you could do, okay, sorry. <laughs> There's always like seven different ways to do things, and I was like, which one's the easiest? Like, which? Then I waffle back and forth. Um, oof. That's not lined up. Alright, close enough. Um, so what you could theoretically do is do a, one of, one of two things in this instance. Um, you could just hit W and make sure this is set to not contiguous. Select this, and then do Control i to invert your selection, and basically just... M I did that wrong. Um, <laughs> Control i again, uh, and if you just mask that off, uh, it will... Ah, it's the, it's the glorious Redshift logo messing with stuff. Um, it'll give you that sort of white wireframe, and then if you want to be like really lazy about it, you can just... And a lot of times, I'm not gonna lie, I do. Um, what the heck? Do FX, do a color overlay and just make it white. Um, so this is what I would do if just doing like a regular multiply for some reason doesn't work. Um, and now you have a lovely white wireframe. Uh, obviously this doesn't work as well in super high dense areas or areas where you have a giant redshift logo all over your render. Um, but for areas like this, you know, it works pretty well. So if, again, if you have like a black object, I would make your wireframe white. It's just going to look a little bit better. Or like some some other, ob what am I saying? Some other color that will actually show up. So that's wireframes. Hopefully it makes sense. Hooray.